my last lecture i talked about state estimation uh, and then connection of kalman filter particularly the stationary kalman filter with the time series models so uh, similar ideas being pursued through different approaches different domains but uh, what you are actually trying to achieve is quite qualitatively quite similar that is modeling of unmeasured disturbances whether you go through kalman filter approach whether you go through time series modeling approach they actually merge and you can show that there are uh, similarities except the one can be viewed as a parameterization of the other and now we move on to control so till now we talked about estimating states um uh, now we talk about controlling those states so uh, which state do you want to control i want to control all the states okay so if i have a state estimator i have a sensor that reconstruct the states so i have uh a measurement of states which is constructed using model and the true measurements true sensor measurements i get state measurement now the state measurement is going to be used to do closed loop control using state feedback that is the idea okay so i want to move towards this uh, model predictive control model predictive control is a tool which has uh, become very very popular in industry it started with chemical industry but by now it's it's everywhere all the domains uh, robotics or uh, you know in control of motors in control of fuel cells all kinds of all kinds of applications it started in chemical engineering because this is a very very computational intensive tool multi variable control tool which can handle constraints multi variable interactions simultaneously and now uh, there are commercial packages which uh, actually are available to implement these tools and we'll be seeing one of them uh, not the package at least the implementation towards the later part of this course uh, but the background for all this model predictive control is actually classical uh, linear quadratic optimal control theory okay so to set the background uh, in principle i can start uh, directly teaching model predictive control after i have identified the models uh, you can directly start developing this predictive controllers that's what is done in the industry they develop models the mostly from data very rarely from uh, first principle but there are cases where you develop from first principles also so you develop models either from data or from first principles then use uh, them to develop a predictive controller you may be developing if you have a first principle model or uh, whether you have or you don't have it, whichever way you have you have a state space model that state space model then is used to develop an observer and then you use the observer to construct a state feedback controller that is the philosophy and that state feedback controllers practical implementation today is model predictive control okay so i want to reach model predictive control eventually but you know we are not just the practitioners we want to understand the theory behind the whole thing you know, why how uh, other than just how it works we also want to know why it works what was the philosophy how it evolved <coughs> so quadratic gaussian optimal control is something that is uh, where it all started and then a practical version of this quadratic optimal gaussian control is model predictive control okay so that uh, it will not be completely surprise for you so i'll start with the motivation then i'll move on to reachability reachability is like now you will see the development is very very parallel completely parallel in fact uh and when i'm going to talk about model predictive control there are parallels to model predictive control in state estimation i haven't talked about it but there are parallels to that also so one could in principle do you know just two parallel developments uh what changes is in state estimation we are worried about the past of the system 
okay and the current state how does the past and the current state are related in predictive control we are worried about the future of the system okay same model equations one will view at the past through optimization optimal control formulation the other will optimal not control optimization based formulation we saw that kalman filter is an optimization based formulation though final form looks like there is no optimization involved but actually you are minimizing the covariance of the uh, estimation error so it's a elegant recursive solution okay but uh, basically it's an optimization problem being solved the same thing we'll do here to control we'll have a problem which is so before i move to that to the optimal control problem i we talked about pole placement observer i talk about pole placement controller okay so very very similar idea and then i'll move on to uh, optimal linear quadratic optimal control optimization based formulation okay just like you have a recursive solution there you will see that there is a recursive solution here okay so there will be complete parallel okay the parallel at least for this course will stop when you start talking about model predictive control though there is a parallel to that in state estimation i have not taught about it i have not taught it i have not talked about it and uh, we'll move on to so before i before i uh, go ahead let me tell you where we are standing right now today when you go to a a plant okay a large scale plant say a chemical plant or a power plant okay uh, <coughs> and if you look at the control structure in a large scale production facility okay it consists of multiple layers okay the first course in control that you study is here regulatory control you talk about sensors uh you know so you learn about control valves uh, or stepper motor or some kind of actuators okay and then you have some sensor speed sensor uh, you know uh, you have ph sensor temperature sensor level sensor uh, or you have you know some frequency sensor so you have all kinds of current sensor voltage sensor so you have all these pv is process variables all these measurements coming to your pid controllers and then you have uh, mvs are manipulated variables which are sent to the plant okay now this is this is something which we study in your first control course and then something about this i also talked in this course i talked about interactions okay some decoupling and all that so all that will stand at this layer okay we are not going beyond that in a modern plant you have one more layer which is called as advanced control layer this advanced control layer consists of two sub layers okay one is a multi variable controller this could be linear controller or could be non linear controller typically this is a multi variable non linear controller okay this is what is that model predictive control which i am going to talk about so this this will be just moving one step up in the control hierarchy okay there is one more layer which talks about uh, online optimization what is the best operating condition under the prevailing situation okay see for example i'll give you an example from chemical engineering but i think all of you can appreciate uh is it here no it's not here okay i'll just talk about it i'll just mention it okay so you know uh chemical one of the major chemical industry is petroleum refining right you get crude oil and then the first uh, thing that you do is you have a huge crude distillation column in distillation you separate uh you know uh, different uh, hydrocarbons based on their volatility so uh, the light hydrocarbons they come at the top of the column there is a huge column um, in which uh, you know the vapor is flowing up and the liquid is flowing down and because of the counter you know uh, counter current interaction between the vapor and the liquid you get separation of different products at different stages okay so at the top you draw light components at the middle you draw so at the top you will get lpg okay at you come the little down you will get uh, you know uh, 
petroleum let it down you will get kerosene and aviation turbo fuel let it down you will get diesel then you come down in that column you will get uh, some lubricating oils and the uh, bottom you will get tar and then what you do is this tar you again crack and create convert it into lighter products because you don't want to have a lot of tar so you convert it into gasoline and, and so on so there is this is the petroleum processing uh, or crude processing plant <coughs> now how do you operate this plant what is the best temperature pressure operating conditions for the given crude column that depends upon which type of crude you are using it depends upon whether you are processing gulf crude or bombay high crude or you know some venezuela crude it depends upon the crude quality okay there is no there is no one way of operating the plant for the other thing that happens is you know there are a lot of heat exchanger equipment associated with this column and then you know the heat exchanger equipment starts fouling after some time so efficiency of the heat transfer reduces so you cannot operate at the same set points which were designed set points because you know the heat transfer efficiency has reduced you have to change a few things okay then you are probably afterwards carrying out some reaction to break the tar into you know or the heavy components into lighter components there are some catalysts the catalyst starts degrading over time okay so you have to change the operating conditions temperature and pressure inside the column how do you do it what is done is that they have a mathematical model coming from physics which steady state model which is used online to find out what is the best operating point okay what is the most op optimal operating point opti what is optimal that could be that could differ from situation to situation for example you know uh, that comes from a top layer called as scheduling and planning layer a scheduling and planning layer would tell you that this month month of november is diwali you need more kerosene uh, you know you have to supply kerosene to different uh, households because they use more uh, uh, fuel december you need aviation turbo fuel more because there is lot of tourist traffic and there is lot of demand for uh, aviation turbo fuel and so on so there might be different operating goals and then in month of uh, february you are saying well i want to operate the plant i don't care now about maximizing kerosene nor maximizing aviation turbo fuel i want to operate the plant in such a way that i have maximum profits okay so that these are different goals and then the set points that need to be given to the controllers lower to this multi variable controller and regulatory controller are different when you have different operating goals now those are actually determined by this online optimization and scheduling planning layer okay scheduling planning layer will set goal for a month or a 15 days this online optimization will decide what should be today's set point for one shift or two shifts or three shifts so this on online optimization is run once in once in a day or twice in a day and then you download the set points to this multi variable controller and this multi variable controller then talks to the uh, lower layer which is pid controllers and is pid controllers it's complete uh, like management hierarchy you know there is some big boss there are multiple managers and so it's it's like that it's completely hierarchical system you know uh, actually in terms of hardware okay so and then there are these pid controllers are workers you know the grassroots workers they will manage only one loop at a time some flow set point is given it has to maintain that flow it doesn't bother about the larger picture so so this is this is the uh, now this top layer is actually uh, is actually uh, they, see these are control layers and companies today's control companies like honeywell or abb or whatever which are rose mount all of them supply a solution which is not just pid controllers they supply a solution from this point to this point okay you might start wondering who whom does this belong to is this scheduling planning is this management job it is not these are very very complex mathematical programming problems and they have to be solved by us not by uh just people who do management the the management people can of course decide the bigger strategies but actually when it comes to finding an optimal you have to solve optimization problem that's all mathematics that's that's where system engineers are required so you need to model the plant uh, in such a way that the problem doesn't become too complex and 
you can uh, online optimization and multi variable controllers are actually also equally complex because this see for example if you want to decide what is the optimal operating point for a power plant you need to have a model for the power plant okay you need to have a model for the steam generator you need to have a model for furnace you need to have a model and then you have to decide depending upon suppose the the fuel oil that is going to the furnace has changed or the coal quality that is coming to a you know co a steam plant which is operated on the coal has changed you have to have a different operating scheme you cannot have the same same thing for anything that uh, comes in so so this has to be solved and first of all these models have to be developed so you need chemical mechanical um, electrical engineers to develop these models these are very complex models and believe me that this is not something i am talking about which is uh, you know some cutting edge technology this is by by the time it is not a cutting edge technology it was a cutting edge technology in uh, late 80s okay now this is done in many many plants in india it was started in chennai petrochemicals way back in 78 or way back in 85 i think 84 85 they implemented this this kind of a control scheme not not the scheduling planning but online optimization multi variable control these are very very costly controllers very very costly controllers this kind of a controller would uh, you know easily cost something like 100000 dollars it's not that you know pid controller you can get for you know 50 dollars or 100 dollars but not <laughs> these controllers are very complex the most complex part of this is modeling as you can imagine if you have a good model you can do good control okay so modeling and state estimation are crucial if model and estimates of the states are good because these are model based controllers okay they use models online okay there are many many issues how good is your model how fast you can do calculations okay so uh, how do you realize this through hardware so there are many challenges and still even though this particular technology is 30 years old i don't think all of the challenges are solved okay so there are uh, still evolving uh, field <laughs> but this model rate to control is one situation where you know unlike the rest of the control theory which was developed first in university labs or you know defense labs and then it percolated to the industry this is one example which is other way around it was first implemented by shell okay and it was first implemented in france by a industrial group and then probably because some competition between them they decided to publish it and then that resulted in you know development of an area which is this model predictive control so now uh, it's a huge research area there are uh, you know uh, workshops held uh, for or uh, research symposiums held on model predictive control and so on so <coughs> yeah input to the plant is given no no see the actual input to the plant is typically given by the pid controller pid controller gets the set points from this multi variable controller no no so i so now you look at it that this pid controllers are part of the plant as far as this higher level controller is concerned so higher level controller will have a model that includes the pid model okay so as far as the higher level control is concerned it only looks at the set point as an input to the plant and measurement is still this pv okay so it's a cascade if you know what is a cascade control it's like a cascade form okay so this is this will only give set points again this will give set points to this this will give set points to this it's like hierarchical okay so this scheduling layer will give set points targets let's say to this optimization layer optimization layer will give you set points uh, for the multi variable controller multi variable controller will give set points to individual pid controllers okay and uh, this is also done many times because of safety suppose something happens and this 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 layer fails okay even then pid controllers are active because pid controllers are many okay so this typically this could be a one monolithic controller so if the computer implementing this somehow stops there is a virus or something then you know you have a problem so whereas uh, 
so this this controller directly talking to plant is many times not done though now those kind of controllers are also available but you uh, go through an intermediate layer and then yeah and a model model knows about the interactions so they will get uh, automatically very much so this this predictive controller not only does job of multi variable control it also does a job of what is called as constraint handling constraint handling means you know you have all kinds of constraint when you operate a plant you know see uh, suppose uh, you are letting some flue gas to the atmosphere you know it should not have so much co2 or it should not have so much of co and you are letting something into the uh, water it should not its ph should be so much so there are so many constraints you have some temperature you have a reactor the temperature should not cross some safety limit okay all kinds of constraints are there pressure should not cross some safety limit so all these things constraints are handled today in a plant through what are called as programmable logic controllers so you have pid controllers which are individually working there are these programmable logic control uh, controllers which you know take some uh, kind of actions based on some you know uh, wisdom that has been gained over period of time if this happens and if that happens then do this so then this plc will override the pid controller and will give priority to the safety suppose some temperature is rising and this particular uh, steam valve is open shut the steam valve so you have all kinds of rules okay and these rules are through lot of experience and then you code them it's like a programmer uh, program which actually keeps checking different conditions if then else and then there are recipes as to you know what you do if something happens so this is this is this is how it is currently handled this controller model predictive controller it can simultaneously handle multi variable interactions it can handle constraints okay so that's why it's 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 actually a monolithic thing which can uh, do many things anyway we'll move to that uh, later so why do i want to do advanced control because first of all there are complex multi variable interactions as i i said i don't know whether i gave you this example earlier of the car where you have three drivers so just imagine pid controller there are thousands of pid loops in a in a plant in a chemical plant in a power plant in a metallurgical plant there are thousands of loops and if the and pid controllers do not talk to each other okay so it's like thousand drivers and it's that's why you know it's, it can create chaos then there are operating constraints and pid controller equation doesn't know about those constraints so what you do in a pid controller is you again you know in your software you put if then else if this happens then don't use pid controller output do something else all these all these things are given in the pid block and you can actually put those things so safety limits are handled in the ad hoc manner using plc and pid and then it, it, it is quite messy so there are three kinds of constraints i would say there is safety constraints there are actuation constraints see pid controller when you say that output is gain times error into something you don't say that you know output cannot be more than this if error is 100 and you know gain is 500 output will become 1000 but my valve cannot open more than 100% so what about that okay all these things cannot be put into a uh, equation so what do you do then is then you write you know you write pid controller equation then you write an if statement if pid controller output goes beyond this then don't use pid controller output put it equal to 100 okay so all this ad hoc things have to be done okay then on top of it process has non linearities process conditions keep changing so multi loop controllers are very difficult to use and handling logic through ad hoc manner is very very difficult to plcs it is done today but it's a very difficult system to maintain and non linearity can be handled through what is called as gain scheduling but uh, many times predictive controllers can give you much better way okay so now i i am going to start developing this stochastic uh, optimal control some things i am to go going to go through very quickly we are familiar with this model i am going to take the same model i don't care which way you develop this model whether you came from physics linearized and then did something or 
you started from data and then you know you got this model completely by time series modeling like we are doing through Linux toolbox doesn't matter so uh, i am going to take a simplistic assumption that wk and vk are uncorrelated if they are correlated also we can handle it, that situation uh, in fact when you develop time series models you get a situation where wk and vk are correlated but that is not a difficulty so that's not a really limitation what we have to begin with a model uh, that relates unknown in, known inputs with the state unknown inputs with the state we know these are gaussian white noise processes so this is a simplifying assumption we'll start by developing controllers using the most ideal conditions one by one we'll relax them and go to the practical situation that's how i want to do it so you know about this model how do i design optimal state feedback controller now okay so the controller design is going to be done like this uh, we assume that all the states are measurable okay and design the controller okay then uh, we design a stable state estimator okay and then using state estimated estimated states we implement the state feedback control law okay and then the separation principle there is something called separation principle i'll talk about it that ensures that if you separately design observer and the controller to be stable then the joint system of observer controller is stable under nominal conditions under perfect model conditions okay so at least some guarantee uh, of stability um, why am i working with state space models because in state space models it doesn't matter whether you are working with single input single output multiple input multiple output five outputs three inputs non square system square system doesn't matter everything can be done under one single framework okay second thing is all your linear algebra can be used okay not that when you go to transfer function description linear algebra cannot be used but algebra of transfer function matrices becomes very very complex beyond a certain point up to 3 by 3 4 by 4 it's okay but model predictive control i will show you some at least uh show uh, of what has been done in the industry people have implemented model predictive controllers where there are 600 outputs and 300 inputs simultaneously modeled okay simultaneously manipulated 300 in inputs 280 inputs simultaneously manipulated by you know monitoring 600 outputs simultaneously so one monolithic controller trying to take you know 280 input manipulated moves two inputs 280 inputs it's it's, it's quite mind boggling designing that kind of a controller using transfer function paradigm is uh, i won't say impossible but little difficult to deal do the algebra and everything okay let's begin with uh, this notion of controllability or reachability okay the first question that i'm going to ask is given this this model is given to me can i move the system from anywhere to anywhere okay this is a question which is very very similar to what we asked about observability given these measurements can i estimate the initial state okay something like that now i'm going to now my problem is little different now earlier in observe observe while designing the observer i wanted to find out x not okay now i am saying x not is given to you let's say you used some observer observer and then somehow you were able to reconstruct x not okay now if x not is given to you okay and i have this model okay this is how the system evolves okay i want to i want to find out input sequence u0 u1 u3 u4 u5 okay input uh, input vectors in time such that you know i should be able to take this system to any any final state let's say xf i am at some initial point x0 i want to reach any arbitrary final state xf can i do that okay if this question can be answered then we can decide upon how to do that okay is it fundamentally possible for this particular system i want to do state feedback controller i want to take i want to be able to move state from anywhere to anywhere in the state space can i do that okay that is the first question i am going to ask okay 
So this is something like a fundamental property of the linear dynamic system. So this I have highlighted here any arbitrary initial state to any arbitrary final state. It should be not that you know I can move from. Uh, so let's let's start doing that. Let's say you are given x naught, and I start making input moves u zero, u one, u two. Uh, right now there is no controller. Maybe I am doing it as an operator. Okay. So what will be x one? X one will be you know phi x naught plus gamma u naught. U naught is the move that you have implemented. Okay. What will be x two? X two will be phi x one gamma u one, and actually you can show that this is phi square x naught. Right. Just substitute phi gamma u naught and gamma u one. Okay. Likewise, I can go on doing x three. Is equal to phi cube uh, x naught. Now uh, these particular notes I, I yet have to uh, upload. I'll do it uh, on the weekend. Okay, so <coughs> I can just go on writing this recursively. Okay, these are the input moves I am making u naught, u one, okay, u two, and so on. Let's say I have made n moves, where n is equal to dimension of the system. I have X belongs to n-dimensional vector, uh, vector space, uh, so I made n moves. Okay, why this n is so critical will become clear soon. Okay, so this <coughs> is this. Is everyone clear with this? Okay, so now the question that I am going to ask is that can x n be equal to x f? In n state, in n steps, I want to go from x zero to x f. Okay, so so can this can we can we reach XF? Okay, now this last equation, this last equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this XN is equal to XF. See what is what is known here? X naught is given to me. Okay, this phi gamma are known to me. Okay, what I have to do is I have to find out an input sequence. Which will take from x naught to x f. Okay, so what is unknown to me is u naught, u one up to u n minus one. In the observability question was different. In observability, we did not know x naught. We said we knew u. Okay, and then we wanted to estimate x naught. Now just flip it. You know x naught. You don't know u. Okay. so this this equation this last equation this last equation i am just rearranging just see this i am just rearranging this last equation okay the known component i have taken on the right hand side xf is where i want to reach i know where i want to reach okay xf is known to me x not is given to me right initial state is given to me and phi to the power n i know because phi is known phi to the power n is known so this quantity on the right hand side is known Okay, this matrix gamma phi gamma is known because phi is known, gamma is known, so this matrix is known. What is not known is this stacked up vector. Okay, what I have done is I have stacked up u n minus one, u n minus two, u n minus three. These vectors I have stacked up, so this is a huge vector. This is a huge vector. If there are m inputs and if there are n states. This vector will be m n cross one. Okay, this will be m n cross one. So this is a huge vector. So this is like a matrix equation. Matrix into vector is equal to a vector. Okay, this is a matrix. This is a huge vector is equal to vector. When can I find a unique solution to this problem? <coughs> this this particular matrix should be full row rank. the dimension of this matrix is this the the row dimension of this matrix is n there are n n states okay so this particular matrix should be so necessary condition for reachability is that rank of this matrix should be equal to n where n is equal to state dimension so the fundamental thing i have not designed any controller just looking at phi and gamma i can say whether i can take the system from anywhere to anywhere Okay, 
if the system is not reachable if the system is not controllable or reachable they are slightly different notions controllable and reachable reachable reachability is when you can take system from anywhere to anywhere controllability is many times used when you can take system from anywhere to origin okay so when xf is equal to origin then it is many times called controllable and it's called reachable when it, you can take it from anywhere to anywhere and there are some slight differences uh, okay <coughs> so you can design a controller so what what if controller is not reachable then it you should go and add more manipulated variables you should redesign your system okay if you want a system to be con completely reachable okay and if you cannot do that you have to live with whatever you have you have to see whatever is which part is controllable and which part is not controllable so uh, this is actually uh, if you want to uh, if you want to go back from here then uh, and then say change the reachability of a system you may have to change the uh, structure of the system you may have to add some more manipulated variables okay and make it reachable okay so but this is a fundamental characteristic so if a system is controllable then you are guaranteed you can take it or if a system is reachable then you are guaranteed that you can take it from anywhere to anywhere okay so that is a fundamental thing. just like observability when can you develop an observer when you know when you are guaranteed to uh, uniquely estimate the states from the measurements when the system is observable okay observability depends upon only phi and c matrix here it depends upon phi and gamma matrix okay so uh, let's take the cstr example if i take the cstr example this is my phi and this is my gamma so i have uh, two states and i have two inputs two flows one inlet flow one the cooling water flow and concentration and temperature are my two states can i take system from anywhere to anywhere by manipulating these two inputs that is the question if you find out uh, this observability matrix here it turns out to be this if rank is 2 if rank is 2 which is equal to system state dimension you can take it from anywhere to anywhere okay same thing i have done for the quadruple tank system this is my phi gamma matrices using this phi and gamma matrices using these two inputs can i move system from any any state to any state any level any combination of four levels to any other combination of four levels okay that question when you do this linearization and start thinking in terms of linear model this question can be answered analytically without actually having to you know design a controller see that is the beauty of this analysis you can just look at those matrices construct some you know some other matrix and looking at the rank you can say yes i can take from anywhere to anywhere okay so if you construct the controllability matrix for this quadruple tank system uh, this will be 4 cross you know whatever 4 cross 8 yeah because there are two inputs so each gamma is 4 cross 2 phi gamma will be 4 cross 2 this is phi square gamma will be 4 cross 2 and phi cube gamma will be 4 cross 2 n minus 1 so you have to use gamma phi gamma phi square gamma phi cube gamma why why you stop at phi cube because n is equal to 4 okay n is equal to 4 so just go back and look at this condition here yeah so gamma phi gamma up to n minus 1 where n is the state dimension okay if this matrix if this matrix has rank 4 then i can take system from anywhere to anywhere okay <coughs> okay now i am going to do this pole placement controller design very very quickly because this is something that we have done for observer okay uh, so i am not going to spend too much time on this pole placement controller design uh, same idea that what we did for observer design do you remember or i have to conduct a quiz so that you remember which is <laughs> observable canonical form we transform the system to observable canonical form place the poles in the transform domain and then we did a inverse transformation to find out the observer in the original uh, state space same thing is used here except instead of moving to observable canonical form here you will move to controllable canonical form okay
you have this original model for the seesaw case well I do the transformation move to the observable canonical form sorry controllable canonical form then for this controllable canonical form uh, you know do a design do a pole placement design in the controllable canonical form and then come back to the original uh, problem. So, uh, if you if you design a controller now here in the in the transform domain the closed loop equation becomes this and you know uh, so determinant of this will be just so just looking at the first row of the controllable canonical form you can tell what is the characteristic equation ok match it with the desired equation. So, this coefficient is equal to this coefficient this coefficient is equal to this coefficient so that you do and then uh, you know you get uh, this uh, the controller gain matrix in the transform domain and then you know uh, come back to the original domain by multiplying by the T transformation matrix. How do you get transformation matrix? In earlier case we got a transformation matrix by multiplication of two observability matrices inverse of one and here it will be two controllability matrices ok. So, it is everything is you know like a mirror image what is happening there is happening here it's no no difference. So, if you understand one you understand the other ok. So, you have this coordinate transformation T which is uh, so, controllability matrix of W tilde is for this controllable canonical form W con is for the original uh, controllability matrices of the uh, canonical form and of the original form ok. So, these can be computed very easily you compute this uh, uh, so I am not going to spend too much time on this uh, I think less than 5 minutes that is what I have uh, ended up spending. So, you if you have any difficulty you just ask me because this is what we have already done except now you know uh, everything will look transformed everything look with transpose of what, what was earlier this this particular matrix this particular matrix when it is controllable canonical this is a row ok in observable canonical it is a column ok but exactly the same idea no, you are not doing anything different and then uh, you just design this uh, so here I have given you formula for how to get this T inverse and uh, and you can see here you can place the poles to any arbitrary location place the poles of the closed loop ok now placing the poles of the closed loop to an arbitrary location only when the system is reachable the system is not reachable if the rank condition does not hold you cannot place the poles to any arbitrary location ok. So, now let us see whether the closed loop is stable ok because uh, the primary criteria when you design is that uh, closed loop should be stable. Now, you will say well I have designed uh, by pole placement you choose the poles of the closed loop ok, but there is a catch when you have done this when you have done this your controller is based on the true states here what is neta? Neta is T x right see we have this transformation neta k is T of x what is x? x is the true state ok. So, when I did the design I have done a design using true state feedback. In reality, I am never going to get all the state measurements. So, I have to rely on an observer, ok. I have to rely on an observer, agreed. So, when I want to implement this controller, so this is fine, you know, you design this controller and then you got this, uh, and by design, if everything is perfect, if all the states are perfectly measurable, then by design, this is stable, right? Because what what you have done here you have placed the closed loop poles right you have placed the closed loop see this is this is the control law you plug it into here when you plug it into here you will get phi c minus gamma c g c this was the mid same problem right. So, uh, so you already know about this and many of you have done it correctly. So, 
uh, or most of you have done it correctly. So, so you do this except that you did it in a hard way. You know, you just found out the determinant and then equated. This is a more elegant way. You just do a transformation. Look at the first row or first column and then do things. So this is algebraically more elegant. That's all. Uh, what you have done in the Bitsem problem is by a very crude way. Just find out determinant, then find out the characteristic equation, equate it to the equate the coefficients, and then <coughs> that is possible for two cross two uh, system. Beyond that, uh, you know, if you have to do it for n cross n, it can become algebra can become very very messy. What you have done in the mid sem, if you have to repeat that for a real big problem. So this is very nice when it goes to large dimensional systems. But here the stability is ensured only if the states are perfectly measurable. States are not perfectly measurable. So what you are going to do? You are going to actually take a state estimator, use estimated states, and then implement the controller. And now the question is: Is this joint thing stable? Okay. Is the joint observer controller pair? Do they form? A stable. That is what I mean by nominal closed loop stability. So my plant dynamics is given by this. Okay. Right now I have taken a simplistic viewpoint. I have no state disturbances. I have no measurement noise. Okay. Ideal situation. Just to understand. Okay. I am developing a state observer. Let's say this is my Leonberger observer. Okay. This is my Leonberger observer. And my Leonberger observer, Okay, so this is my Leonberger observer, and see my controller is not going to be minus g into x k because x k is not known to me. Only y k is known to me. This y k has been used here. This y k has been used here, of course, with a delay of one. This y k has been used here with to reconstruct the state. Okay, and this reconstructed state is what I am going to use to compute u k. Okay. So my question now is that is this plus this together? See, this is a dynamical system. This is another dynamical system, and they are connected through this equation. Okay, is the joint plant and estimator controller pair? Okay, is this plus this plus this is this together stable? Okay, what I have done is. I have designed this separately. I have designed this separately, isn't it? I have designed a pole placement observer, Leonberger observer. I have designed a pole placement controller here. Okay. Now, will a stable pole placement controller and a stable, you know, pole placement observer together give me a stable closed loop behavior? Okay. That is the question that I want to ask. Okay. <coughs> What is the observer dynamics? This this we already have studied, so uh, not to worry. This uh, so I am just combining now. Just look at this equation. What I have done here is u k I have substituted as x hat k given k minus one. So now this equation now becomes phi x k minus gamma g into x hat k given k minus one. Okay, now I am going to use this relationship here. That is, x hat k given k minus one is x k minus error. Is everyone with me on this? X k minus error. So this I have just substituted as true minus the error. Okay, once I do this, okay, I get phi minus gamma g. Phi minus gamma g into x k, okay, and gamma g into epsilon k. What we have done when we designed the controller, pole placement controller, 
we have made sure that poles of phi minus gamma g are inside the unit circle okay many of you in the mid same have forgotten that you are dealing with continuous time systems uh, discrete time systems the exam which example which was given was discrete time system and you have used the conditions for continuous time system for stability uh, standard trick uh, which some of you have fallen for it uh, okay so here uh, how do we design the observer phi minus lc had poles inside the unit circle how do we design the controller phi minus gamma c had poles inside the unit circle okay now this equation plus this equation is it jointly stable okay so what i am going to do now i am going to combine this equation and this equation into one big matrix equation okay so uh, is everyone with me on this all that i have done i have stacked up xk plus 1 true plant dynamics which now evolves according to this okay the true plant dynamics is affected by xk and error okay error dynamics is affected by only error dynamics okay i have just combined these last two equations this equation and this equation this equation this equation has xk and epsilon k given k minus 1 this equation has only epsilon k given k minus 1 i have just clubbed them into one big equation okay what can you say about eigen values of this matrix huh eigen values of these matrix are nothing but eigen values of observer and controller okay because of its special form this zero here helps you a lot okay so what you can show is that the closed loop characteristic equation of this particular system is nothing but determinant of lambda i minus uh you know phi minus gamma g minus determinant of lambda i minus phi minus uh, lc now roots of this part are inside unit circle roots of this part are inside unit circle so together everything is inside unit circle very nice you can separately design observer and controller to be stable at least for the nominal case when the model is perfect okay you are guaranteed that the implementing state feedback control law using estimated states is going to give you stable closed loop behavior okay this is a very simplified form of what is called as a separation principle you can separately design observer to be stable controllers to be to be stable marry them together they are stable okay you will get stable closed loop behavior that is the that is the message from this simple calculation okay so <coughs> since we have made sure that spectral radius of this mat this matrix is less than 1 and oh i just put uh, we have separately made sure that spectral radius of this matrix is less than 1 and spectral radius of this matrix is less than 1 you know then uh both of them both of the things are separately designed to be stable the joint thing is also stable that's a very very nice result so that uh, you don't have to do a sign at least for the nominal case okay so well let's look at the cstr example uh this is my uh state space model i have knocked off the di disturbances this is the raw model what i did was i transformed it into the controllable canonical form okay you can do it by various ways you can use it through that transformation other sim in fact instead of using the transformation the simplest way i would say is to find out a transfer function look at the numerator and denominator and you know how to write the form right the transformation matrix did not be found you just find out transfer function look at the numerator you can write uh, you know one column b column gamma column and then look at the denominator you can write first row and rest all is simple so doing that is you don't have to really find the t matrix you can do it without t matrix 
the reason to show t matrix is to show that these are only reorienting in the state space okay so it's reorienting the state space so you just convert it into controllable canonical form then you can design uh, the g this is g tilde this part without multiplication of t this is g tilde the t is required of course t is required because you do a design of g tilde and then you have to recover g which is in the original state space so you need to find out this t matrix so this multiplied by this matrix will give you gain okay yeah software or well i can think of possibility of doing observer implementation through uh, lrc circuits or you know through uh, op amp kind of circuits it's possible okay you can realize the things that linear differential equations can be realized through op amp circuits so i can have an equivalent op amp circuit okay uh, which will uh, act like an observer okay and you can do uh, observer but uh, observer but I, i doubt how will you reconstruct the entire state vector you can have an op amp circuit for it will be difficult to get the entire state vector through op amp circuit i think <laughs> i think observers have been implemented uh, to, to best of my knowledge they have been implemented through micro microprocessors i don't know whether you can do it uh, i don't know i don't know it might be possible i will check and tell you because there is lot of continuous time observer theory which probably means that uh, even before microprocessors were used observers were probably implemented through op amp circuits so i like to find out i should not but what i can tell you is that uh, a differential equation just like it can be solved numerically inside a computer it can be solved using op amp circuits and then when uh, this uh, probably our generation has seen maximum transition uh, when i was doing my mtech in iit madras we had a, a simulator there which was a, a analog simulator so actually you could develop a, a, a analog circuit which is uh, using lrc and uh, op amp blocks okay which is equivalent to a differential equation okay and then you know you can have a comparator see if you want to find out the error y minus y hat you can have measurement coming you can have a comparator comparator ultimately what is it it's gain multiplied a gain multiplying the uh, you know error being fed back it's a differential equation a differential equation can be realized through uh, op amp circuit so it should be possible in principle to uh, whether it was done commercially i do not know it must have been done in defense applications i am sure and then when you don't have time to do computations you know when your system is so fast you have to realize it through op amp circuits you cannot so well answer to your question is it should be possible to do it through uh, op amp circuits so just an example i am just implementing one pole placement controller and observer for this cstr system uh, i start from some non zero initial condition where non zero in the sense perturbation okay and i want to go to the uh, initial uh, 0000 means perturbation 00 okay so uh, this is the this is how the state evolves and this is the manipulated input i have designed a single ciso controller Uh, single input uh, manipulation and this is how the observer this is observer controller pair okay so initial estimate is wrong and then together they actually converge and work quite well just a demonstration of okay multivariable pole placement becomes messy okay see first of all when you the same thing that we had we had a problem in the observer design it's not that it is not possible to do there is it's possible to do multivariable pole placement for observer or for controller in matlab you have a subroutine called place okay you just give phi gamma and say place the poles of the closed loop at so and so location it will give you g matrix or 
you give phi and c and say place give the closed loop observer poles it will give you observer matrix it's possible to do leonberger observer or pole placement controller for a multiple input multiple output system uh, for observer i have uploaded that paper by leonberger 1966 so that you can probably have a look but there is one problem why why i went for the uh, why i am now going to move to optimization formulation rather than pursuing this pole placement idea further okay and why did i do it even for you know earlier case that is uh, well one practical problem of course is that when you are doing placing the poles you are actually specifying only n poles okay and the number of elements of this gain matrix g here they are m cross n because you have m inputs so this matrix is m cross n so you have more number of parameters than the equations and then you have to fix some of them arbitrarily to get uh, so there is some uh, problem but those things can be fixed that is not a real problem see what is uh, don't look at those equations look at uh, blank uh, sheet uh, uh, <laughs> see when you when you are uh, designing a controller okay there are what are the two primary considerations when you design a controller what is the most first fundamental thing stability first thing is closed loop should be stable that is the first thing okay what is the second thing performance not only that you want it to be stable okay but you want to be controller that is performing very well okay i'll give you an analogy which not every one of you will like but it's it's good analogy okay so designing a stable controller you know is like saying your cgpa is above 4 okay anybody who is between 10 and 4 is a graduate from iit bombay okay is stable okay so that is primary thing otherwise you cannot get out of iit bombay okay but you know you want a good performance okay how do you measure it so you want you know you uh, want high cpi <laughs> so now why did we do why did we do optimal observer design through linear quadratic optimal control okay it solved two problems in one shot it solved stability problem okay it also solved performance problem because we specified the performance designed an optimal observer and it also gave you poles inside unit circle see stability was guaranteed since you got a topper okay he was you know above 4 point between so you didn't have to worry about whether he is above 4 point or not so that was guaranteed okay so it solved two problems in one shot it solved stability problem and performance problem okay now if you ask me well how do you uh choose the poles here for a multiple input multiple output system okay you can give poles inside unit circle for all the poles inside unit circle you will get a stable controller there are infinite such controllers okay which one of them will give you the best performance okay what is the best performance how do you quantify it how do you you know you have to articulate that so that is where the need to go for an optimal controller design okay uh has come up so this is not just because this approach you cannot use further you can use and uh, you can overcome this practical difficulty of less number of equations than the number of unknowns those are minor difficulties those can be there are solutions for dealing with those things problem is when there are infinite possibilities for possibilities which is the best controller i don't want you know uh, let's say i'm coming from a company i will say well i don't want somebody who has just four points i want somebody who has nine points okay so that's where that's where this uh so don't take it too hard okay it doesn't mean that somebody who has four points is not a student that's a wrong notion okay everybody is a good student okay uh like uh, i don't know whether you have seen that uh, karate kid old one the first one okay so there this what is that name of this teacher karate teacher 
हाँ मियागी सो मियागी सेज दैट नेवर अ बैड स्टूडेंट ऑलवेज अ बैड टीचर सो इफ यू आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेल आई एम फेलिंग नॉट नॉट दैट यू आर बैड बैड स्टूडेंट ओके सो दिस so i'm going to design now a optimal controller to begin with i'm going to do it in the most ideal situation okay one by one i will relax those conditions and i'll go to a most complex controller okay so initially i'm going to take this model which is linear state space model no disturbances no measurement error okay only thing that has happened is somehow the current state is not equal to the origin origin is the desired state steady state okay that's where i want to be somehow it has got disturbed think of a pendulum i want to be exactly here in the middle no perturbations but somehow the pendulum has gone here okay how do i best how do i quickly get it to the origin okay i don't want pendulum to go like this for a long time i want just to come here and stop here okay whatever i want to i want it to come to the origin as fast as possible okay somehow it has got disturbed we don't ask this questions why x not is not equal to 0000000 is origin i want to get the system from some x not which is not equal to 0 to the origin this is the first problem i'm going to solve very very so <coughs> what i'm going to do now is i'm going to find out optimal input sequence okay i want to find an optimal input sequence by minimizing certain objective function okay by minimizing certain objective function now you can see here that there are three terms here what is this first term first term is well let me just move on to See if you have a matrix, if you have a vector x, norm of x, say two norm. Simplest way of defining two norm is of course x transpose x, right? So this is nothing but x one square plus x two square x square, right? This is two norm square, two norm square, right? Okay, but is this the only way of defining a norm? This is not the only way of defining norm. So you can have, you can also define a norm, which is, let me call this x w two, which is w one x one square plus w two x two square plus w n x n square, where w i are greater than zero for all i. okay if i choose some weighting w1 w2 w3 wn which are all greater than 0 why I, i would do this i would do this sometimes if i have a vector x which have dissimilar elements then for doing scaling i can use this multiplication factor by the way one thing which i forgot to write to all of you for uh, assignment is that if you have uh, measurements which are of dissimilar magnitudes and if you have inputs which are of dissimilar magnitudes when you do system identification it is helpful to work with scaled variables okay one easy way of scaling is take output each output find its standard deviation take each input find its standard deviation and divide it divide the output by its own standard deviation divide the input by its own standard deviation so you'll get scaled input and scaled outputs all of them will be you know Between plus or minus two or plus or minus three, okay, and then it is very easy to do system identification. The problem optimization problem become very well posed, and it's the solutions come much better. If one variable is ten to the power five, other variable is point one, point two, and then you know you have trouble getting good models. This is a numerical difficulty, not stated anywhere in anywhere. So in Lung's book, somewhere in background last chapter. practical tips you will find this you know <laughs> you should do this uh why scaling works makes things better well probably uh, i don't know the full theory but it does make things better uh so 
<coughs> well, so this is scaling, and this actually can be written as norm x w two square is equal to x transpose w x, where w is a diagonal matrix with w one, w two. W n appearing on the diagonal, okay. So basically, this is square of distance of x from the origin. This is length of the vector using some scaling factor, okay. So let me switch back to this. Now look here. What is this first term? the first term talks about distance of x from the origin using a scaling factor square of the distance so you want to find out just concentrate on the first term now you want to find out inputs such that square of the distance from the origin is as small as possible minimize sum of the square of distance from the origin okay find out u such that okay now why this another term has been added here so there is one more term here okay now it may happen if you say that you know you are at some point from the away from the origin and you suddenly want to move to origin this might lead to inputs moves which are very large okay very large so you have some stepper motor you know you cannot change it from some you know by large amount in one second or one millisecond or whatever is your you know there is some physical limit okay how do you incorporate that physical limit how do you tell optimization program that well do it but do it slowly okay so to do that you penalize some of the square of inputs okay so find out input moves such that okay the distance from the origin is minimized at the same time do not use large input moves okay there is one more term which is added this is the last state i want to reach <coughs> the final state xn this xn would be typically 0 0 okay uh, the final state i am penalizing separately so this term here this term here and this term are not separate except typically sometimes a larger weighting matrix is used for the final last stop okay so this is an objective function find that input which will minimize some of the square of distance from the origin find that input which will not be too large okay so i want to reach the final state as quickly as possible so the problem is posed as an optimization problem okay yeah actually you would like to pose this problem uh, uh, i mean you want to say you want to give an extra weightage to the last term because you know you want to go the last term should be as small as possible so i might give an extra large weightage to the last term finally i should go very very close to the origin you know so if i see the idea is like this if i put a large weightage here then it will try to find out that u which makes this last term as close as possible to zero okay so that's a and then also in the derivation it will become clear why i am doing that so there are some artifacts of uh, now here this wx wu and wn are positive definite matrices these are typically tuning matrices i choose them okay i choose them to balance between the speed of recovery speed of recovery is this quantity okay and you know the the uh large penalize the large input moves i don't want sudden changes in the manipulated variable so these things can be uh, so these are typically diagonal matrices with positive entries okay even though i'm saying they are positive definite matrices these are typically positive matrices with uh, uh diagonal matrices with positive entries okay how do i solve this problem okay i'll do it in my next lectures this is done using a celebrated approach called pelman's dynamic program okay this is one of the uh, landmark development uh, in the area of uh, 
Now there is a trouble here in Bellman's dynamic programming. You start from the time last time. Okay, you start from time n. Okay, and you work backwards. Okay, it's a funny situation. In in observer, you are working forward in time. Here you solve the problem backward in time. Okay. Nice thing about this Bellman's dynamic programming is that you will get elegant closed form solution. Okay. But uh, you first solve problem at instant capital N, make it optimal. Then come back to n minus one, make that optimal. Then come back to n minus two, make it optimal. Like this, you go to zero. Okay. So this Bellman's dynamic programming. This is the basic idea that solve the problem at k optimally and then move backward in time. And then again, you know what we are going to get is. Uh, Something called well, I'll just show you where we are going to reach with lot of algebra. We get into uh, a controller which is something like this time varying controller. In Kalman gain, you got time varying gain, right? Here you will get time varying gain again. Exactly, you know, mirror image. Optimization problem there, optimization problem here. Okay, uh, and. Uh, You get uh, what are called as Riccati equations again, okay? But Riccati equations working backward in time. Those Riccati equations are moving forward in time. These Riccati equations move backward in time. So what to do about it? We'll look at it afterwards. So, uh, so this Riccati equations solution of this Riccati equation gives you the controller. Uh, 